On a cold morning in northeast Texas, these biologists are assembling a radio tower on land go down, right. to help restore a rare fish to the water. Today we're putting up a radio telemetry tower at one of our cooperating landowners' ranch. Helping the fish has required no small amount of effort from a number of players. We have 2.6 miles of river front. We are in the cattle business and we're changing our management scheme to help the, the fish here in the bayou. Lift it up. This is one of the three towers that we're putting up. Each tower has antennas pointed both upstream and downstream, so we're able to tell which direction the fish are coming from. Black case. Kind of that way, right. high enough or you can roll it. So why would ranchers, nonprofits, and government agencies go to all this trouble for a fish? I've never seen a paddlefish. Especially a fish most folks have never seen. Well, the paddlefish is one of a kind. Paddlefish are very unique. They're kind of the hodgepodge of the fish world. They have no scales like a catfish. They have a skeleton made completely out of cartilage like a shark. But yet they're a filter feeder like a whale. They may look like mythical creatures, but Wayne Heaton sees paddlefish every day at the Texas Freshwater Fishery Center, just down the road in Athens. I love these fish. They're my favorite fish here. And most people, when they walk up to this exhibit, have no idea what these fish are. When they open their mouth and it looks like a giant net, that's exactly really what it is, is those gill rakers form a net to catch all the plankton, which are basically small bugs in the water. Now, they're still on the threatened species list here in Texas, but in rivers, say like the Mississippi River, they actually still have seasons for them, and they actually still fish for them. They can actually get over seven feet long and 200 pounds. Paddlefish are the oldest living species of fish that we have in North America. They're over 300 million years old. They can date these guys back to the time of the dinosaurs. And when we dammed up all of our rivers, unfortunately, these guys lost a lot of their spawning habitat. So in part to keep paddlefish from going the way of the dinosaur, Good. groups are working together to restore the fish to Cattle Lake and Big Cypress Bayou. Paddlefish were in this system at one time and they're not here anymore because of the river fragmentation. Paddlefish evolved with seasonal flooding, so restoring more natural flows to the bayou was a first step. In the springtime, during their spawning season, they need a high flow pulse to find their spawning grounds and to lay eggs in the fast current in the river. The average Corps of Engineer dam is more than a half century old, and the guiding plans for operating those dams have not been updated since they were originally built. Really for about 10 years, uh, many groups have been working on mimicking these natural flows. Lake of the Pines has done great as a flood control structure, kept Jefferson from flooding, provided lots of water supply for many of the cities. So now we're just asking them to add a third feature, which is releases for fish and wildlife. To gauge how the fish respond to these releases, a transmitter is implanted in each fish at the hatchery. Tag is in, and we will sew up the fish. Fish and Wildlife Service, working with other groups like Cattle Lake Institute, the Nature Conservancy, the Corps of Engineers, USGS, Parks and Wildlife, uh, they've actually implanted radio transmitters in 47 paddlefish, and they're going to release them and track them for about six months. In the channel? Right in the middle of the river. So, the flow restoration, tower installation, and surgical procedures have all been leading up to this particular moment as the transmitter implanted paddlefish arrive at Cattle Lake State Park. Go a little more. I think if we just put paddlefish back in the river with nothing else happening, uh, chances of their success would be low. There are a lot of pieces to this project and a lot of different groups working on it. Today, we're gonna release about 50 of them. You do not forget them when you see one. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, all the uh, incisions look good. Yeah. Everything's going great. The fish look really good. They're going to find things to eat, and they're going to grow yeah. and hopefully thrive. One by one, 
paddlefish are reintroduced to the bayou at the state park and several miles upstream in Jefferson. No one can know if the fish will be lost downstream, if they will thrive or even survive, but hopes are high. Oh, they're so excited. It's really gratifying to, to, to see this day come. We, we've all been working at it for, for many years, and, and to see this release happen today, and it's just a good day for the fish and a good day for East Texas and Caddo. This way, this way, this way. The day after the release, the crew is out on the water. There we go. The fish have not gone far. See paddlefish? This is about where we think he's at. Where they are found, Something. locations are noted. Park that position on the GPS. And plankton samples taken. Let it sink a little bit. It might tell us why they're using certain areas if there's a lot of food in those areas. They're pretty confused, and so they, I don't believe they're honing in on a habitat they prefer yet. And probably about another month or so, we'll start getting some much better habitat data because they're going to start selecting spots where they want to be. It's been about four months now. Since the release, we've contacted 46 of the 47 fish. The uh, towers that we put up, they've been doing the majority of the work for us. The idea of when we go out in the boats is we're trying to find where those fish are between towers. This is where we've seen fish before. You never know. With months to spread out over 60 miles of waterway, the fish can be tough to locate. Yeah, we've gone several miles. We haven't heard anything yet. That's kind of how tracking goes. Hours of searching may not yield a single signal. But if you don't look, you won't find them. We can get you know, maybe within a quarter mile or so of a fish before we detect it. So we have to do a lot of traveling to be able to identify where these fish are. That traveling doesn't always happen on the water. In addition to tracking in the boats, we've got the three stationary towers. Checking towers requires an occasional trip across state lines. Periodically, we'll go out and download the data down there at the Cattle Lake Spillway. This is the end of the line, where the chance to study these fish could be lost. Worst case scenario for me would be if the majority of them uh, went over the Cadillac spillway and we couldn't get them back. So, beyond a gate and atop a tower, the biologists retrieve the cryptic data that will reveal if fish have escaped the study area. We gotta hook the computer up to the data logger and download whatever data uh, we might have. You can actually hear the static right now. It's cycling through the different frequencies looking for uh, paddlefish. If the fish signals stronger on antenna upstream, we know it's still probably up of the dam. If it's stronger on the, on the downstream antenna, we know it probably went over the spillway. There's some data on there. From the data interpreted so far, yeah. it appears fish are staying in the system. Three and a half months into the project, we haven't seen any fish go over the spillway. So that's a plus. It is good news for the study and for future stocking efforts. But back in Texas, where paddlefish are being found, is a bit of a surprise. Well, like at least four Many have traveled as far as possible in the opposite direction. The one interesting thing that we've seen is a lot of fish attracted by the flow coming out of Lake of the Pines have been identified as being present there at the spillway. The unanticipated result was that half the fish went up to the Lake of the Pines. We see little glimpses of things we think might be important, but in another two months we might go, well, this is why that happened, but now they're doing something else. So we've got a little snapshot of what the paddlefish needs, and we really need the bigger picture of what the paddlefish needs. We're about halfway done. But as the tracking and data collection continue, it is already clear this cooperative effort will benefit more than just one fish. I think the paddlefish is a means to an end. I mean, we like to see the paddlefish in here, obviously, but that in turn helps a lot of other species, a lot of other things in the environment, so it's a win-win. It is also a win-win if one threatened fish can teach us how to better manage such a complex and beautiful ecosystem. 
Cattle Lake has the most diverse freshwater fish species in any system in the state of Texas. All the other species that rely on natural river flows and good river habitat are going to benefit from this project. It's just one part of a much, much bigger picture. To learn more about paddlefish research or to track them online, visit cattlelakeinstitute.us.